Hello again, it's Chop Saw time. Welcome back to Tool School for episode four. I'm Emily Pelletin from Girls Garage, and today we're gonna learn how to use the Chop Saw. This is my favorite tool in the whole wood shop. So up until now, we've been doing a lot of planning for this project, this little box that we're building. We've been doing a lot of drawing, and yesterday we marked and measured our pieces so that we can now cut it. So now the fun begins. I want to say two things about safety though because as we start using more tools there's some really important things that you have to keep in mind number one the chop saw is a tool for adults only if you are a young person you need to go get a parent or an adult right now if you are a parent or an adult please make sure that if you have this tool at home that you've read the entire instructional manual that you feel confident to use this safely number two Every time we're in the wood shop when we're using any tools, we're going to do a head to toe safety check. This is like head, shoulders, knees and toes for safety. So item one, if you have long hair, you need to make sure it's tied back. A braid or a bun is preferable, okay, away from your face. Second thing is we're always going to be wearing safety glasses. This is true if I'm using the tool or if I have a friend who's helping me. If you're anywhere near this tool, you need to wear safety glasses and I recommend not just using it while the tool is in use. I just like to put them on, leave them on, forget they're there, then your, your eyes are always safe. I'm also gonna do a check to make sure I don't have anything dangly. So like long earrings or maybe a necklace, hoodie strings. I actually take all of my hoodie strings out of my hoodies for exactly this reason. Nothing that could dangle and, and be dangerous to my safety. I'm also gonna push up my sleeves or better yet, if you can roll them up, do that. I'm going to make sure none of my clothing is really loose. I don't want anything that's too oversized. Then lastly, I'm going to make sure I have closed toed shoes and long pants. All right, so hair tied back, safety glasses, nothing dangly, sleeves pushed up, closed toed shoes and long pants and nothing loose, no loose clothing. Okay, great. So now I've put on my armor for building and I'm ready to go. Let's talk about the chop saw. The chop saw is one of so many different kinds of saws, but it is excellent for one specific purpose. The chop saw is great for making cuts that are called cross cuts. And a cross cut is a cut that goes across the grain of your lumber. So let's take a look at our lumber. This is the one by six that we measured and marked yesterday. And you can see that this wood has a grain and the grain is running kind of like a river current in this direction. So a cross cut is a cut that goes across that grain. If I needed to cut this piece of wood in half this way, this is called a rip cut. A rip cut goes in the same direction as the grain. And this, I could not make a rip cut on my chop saw. I actually need to make a rip cut on a different saw, which is called a table saw. And I'm looking at ours across the room. So cross cut for the chop saw. A chop saw is also sometimes called a miter saw. Miter saw is is the precise name, um, but it's very often and most colloquially called a chop saw. That's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna call it today. Okay, let's look at some of the parts of our chop saw. The first thing is that I have this backboard. This is called the fence. The fence is your BFF. Every cut that we're gonna make, our board needs to be all the way up against the fence along the entire length of it. Nothing like this like this everything against the fence the second part to know about is that your trigger or your on off switch is probably going to be up here in the handle and it's a squeeze action so when you turn it on you're going to squeeze the trigger my blade my blade is red my blade is right here and it's covered up by this plastic guard the guard is extremely important it keeps it it's a barrier between you and the blade it also as I make my cut See how the blade is moving? It moves out of the way so that the blade can actually make the cut, but it keeps you safe. So you should never need to touch your guard. As you're making your cut, don't try to manually move it, just let the guard do the work. All right, so we made our mark on our wood yesterday. Let's just take a quick look at what we did, right? So we made yesterday, we measured our dimension, we used a carrot mark to mark where that dimension is. We made a line across our board, and then we put an X 
which you're gonna find out why we did that in just a moment. All right, so this is the line that we're gonna use to line up our blade. This is what we're gonna cut. Okay, so first things first. When I come up to my saw and I've done my safety check, the first thing I'm gonna do is push the board all the way up against the fence, AKA my best friend. Everything up against the fence. Great. The second thing I need to do is I need to line up my line that I drew with my blade. Now here is the, the, this is also the answer to your homework question. So when I line up my blade, there's one thing I need to take into account and that thing is called kerf. Kerf is spelled K-E-R-F and it is the thickness of your saw blade. This saw blade is one eighth of an inch thick which sounds like a very tiny dimension, but believe me, if you didn't account for this in your cuts and you just cut all your pieces forgetting that this is an eighth of an inch thick, you'd end up with a lot of short pieces. So we need to know that this is an eighth of an inch thick, that it has a thickness, because when I go to line up my blade, I need to put the entire thickness of my blade on the side of my line that has the X. This is the side I don't care about. Remember my off cut side? So come on in and we'll take a look at this. So I am going to pull my blade down. I'm also not touching the trigger right now. My hand is to the side of the handle. So I'm gonna pull my blade down and I'm gonna just move my wood, slide it very slowly. And I'm looking for this. So see how my blade this edge of my blade is lined up with the line. If I were to line it up like that or like that, what's gonna happen? I'm actually cutting into the part that I care about because I haven't taken into account the kerf. So I need to put the entire kerf, the whole thickness of my blade on the X side of my line. So this is what we're looking for here. This is properly aligned, okay? I also need to make sure that as I have been moving this, that I haven't come off of the fence, okay? So I'm gonna move nice and slowly and carefully, line it up so that the side of my blade is right on the line. Double check that I'm still against the fence. And now I'm ready to make my cut. Okay, so I'm ready to make my cut. And I'm gonna just explain to you how I'm gonna make the cut, then I'll actually do it. Okay, so when I go to make my cut, I'm gonna do a couple things with my body. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use my left hand, my non-dominant hand, to be my hold hand. And that hand is going to go right here, as far away from the blade as possible, but still over the bed. So I don't wanna be out here, I wanna still be over the bed. I need the bed for support. So I'm gonna put my dominant hand here, and I am pushing. I'm not just kind of nonchalantly putting my hand there, I'm pushing down. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this hand, and I, I know my trigger button is here. I'm gonna lower my blade just a little bit so that I can start my cut not so high up. I'm gonna start about here. Then what I'm gonna do when I'm ready is I'm gonna pull my trigger, wait for the blade to come up to speed, and then I'm just gonna go straight down, make my cut. I'm gonna release my trigger, but I'm gonna leave the blade down and let the blade stop then I'm gonna raise it back up, okay? So I'm gonna turn on our vacuum, which is a little bit noisy. I'll turn on the vacuum, you can watch me make the cut, and then I'll turn the vacuum off, okay. question is why could I not have measured out all of my eight and a half pieces and then just cut and cut and cut and cut I think you know by now right because if I had done that what would have happened I would have lost an eighth of an inch out of my next cut so it's really really important that I make one cut now I'm gonna go back mark and measure this one then make this cut then mark and measure the next one or measure and mark the next one and then make that cut. So 
measure and then cut and then measure and then cut. We're gonna do that for all the pieces we need on the one by six. I wanna just make one more cut on the one by 10. Excuse me, be right back. I wanna show you a cut on the one by 10 because the one by 10 is much wider and there's one modification that we need to make. So I'm gonna set this up in the same way. Everything's pushed against the fence. I'm gonna line up my blade so that the entire kerf, the thickness, is on the X side of my line. Now the one difference here is that look what is gonna happen. If I just go straight down, I'm not gonna be able to cut all the way through the width of the board. So my saw has something called a slide mechanism, which means I can pull my blade towards me. Ah, <laughs> I can pull my blade towards me and make a cut that will go through the whole width. So if you have a, a saw that can accommodate this, you're gonna make the cut in the same way, except you're gonna do it in an L motion. You're gonna go straight down and then back. So this it will look like this. Let me turn the vacuum on. You may not have a chop saw that has a slide. If you don't, you can also cut through half and then flip the board to do the other side. I, I really recommend if you are in the market for a chop saw to find one that does have a slide. It's super helpful for cutting wide boards just like this. Okay, so that's how you use a chop saw. And tomorrow, we're gonna actually do the same thing but with a hand saw, specifically a coping saw that looks like this. We're going to use this in our next episode. So maybe you need to run out and grab one of these or go looking for it in your garage. We're going to learn how to make these same cuts with this hand coping saw. So great job. Be safe. Have fun. And thanks for being here. See you next time.